a chic, newer hotel in a fantastic location. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated video tours about hotels and flights all over the world. This is my 87th report coming to you today from the Almanac Hotel in Barcelona's famous Eixample neighborhood. I hope you'll stick around and let me show you what this property has to offer. And welcome to the Almanac Hotel. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid and my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. For now, let's take a look around the lobby on this quite overcast morning. Opened in 2017, this 91 room hotel is the first in what should be a new chain of European hotels. They were due to be opened already in Prague and Vienna, but surely COVID has delayed their development a bit. Whether you're planning a trip, researching a hotel, or just passing the time, please let me ask you to give this video a like and subscribe for three new videos each week, a new schedule that I'll begin next week. I'll admit that I'm a bit obsessive, and right now I'm particularly obsessed with making my content better, especially as I transition to running my channels as a full-time gig. That said, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. After all, this content is for you. From the lobby, we're gonna head up to the rooftop lounge Azimuth. The soon-to-be Almanac Group frames up the experience they intend to offer by saying, quote, Our luxury boutique hotels begin with the story of each city, inspired by the meaningful details that create the sensory experience of travel. Each element comes together to make the unique expression of each Almanac location in Europe. So before we go outside to check out the pool area, let's take a quick look at that very location. Barcelona, the tourist mecca that it is now, is a moderately sized city of 1.6 million people. The airport is in the south of the city, and the Almanac is near smack in the middle of it. The hotel is located in the famous Eixample neighborhood, known for its characteristic square, self-sufficient blocks, and is a short walk from the beautiful narrow lanes of the Gothic Quarter. Located on Gran Via Avenue and just a block away from Paseo de Gracia, a main shopping street, the hotel is ideally positioned for any visit to Barcelona. It would have been a bit nicer if the weather was a bit more cooperative on my trip to Barcelona, but that's life and it doesn't stop us from taking in the near 360 degree views of the city that the hotel offers. In the distance to the east, we can see the Catalan mountain range where you can find Montserrat, my favorite day trip from Barcelona. On the other side of the pool, we can see Gran Via and its intersection with Paseo de Gracia. Just a small part of the Azimuth restaurant and lounge is actually indoors, with the majority made up of different seating areas spread around the terrace. While I'm not sure I'd consider this the best place for lounging at the pool all day, with a bit of better weather though, an afternoon vermouth and some tapas would hit the spot. Finally, if we walk around the perimeter a bit, we can catch a glimpse of the spectacular but still unfinished Sagrada Familia. Now, we're going to head down to the primary restaurant for the hotel, Virenz, where we'll take a look at the small breakfast buffet on offer. If you're thinking about visiting the Almanac, please make sure that you check directly with the hotel for their hours of operations, as this was one of the two problems that I had during my stay. When I checked in, I was told the rooftop would open at 6 p.m., and I could have dinner there or down in Virenz. In reality, the rooftop wasn't open at all, and the restaurant down here, it didn't open until 8.30. Because of the miscommunication, the manager offered to apply my property credit towards room service, which otherwise was excluded from the credit included in my rate. Fair enough. When I checked in, I was reminded of that $100 property credit, and that it had a couple of exclusions, specifically room service and the minibar. They were very clear about this, and that's fine. But if you tell me clearly what a property credit excludes, then I think the assumption would be that everything else on property is included. Well, that wasn't the case, and while checking out, the front desk agent actually started raising her voice at me, refusing to apply the credit to a $35 laundry bill. Not a huge deal, but 
it had to be in the top five of th just the most aggressive hotel employees I think I've ever encountered and really left a sour, lasting impression. The buffet on offer was essentially a continental spread, which also included a choice of egg dishes or pancakes cooked a la carte. I had plenty of their coffee and opted for an avocado toast with poached egg. The room service menu was the same that would have been available at Viren's during my stay. I was able to pick up a few things that stood out to me and was all delicious, but I'll just note that the menu was more than 50% vegan, which is fine, but it didn't leave that many options to choose from for non-vegan dishes. Feel free to scan the QR code to see what their up-to-date offerings are now. All right, let's take a more detailed look at the room itself. The hotel merged two buildings, one occupying the corner and the other one just beside it. The elevators open up into a beautiful corridor and my room was the first one in that side building annex. Let me briefly speak about the design. I like the design throughout, but so many hotels are designing with the same palette. Essentially, cool neutral tones with pops of really saturated color especially really saturated color velvets and other soft touch materials in the restaurants, and it just doesn't feel particularly special. The room layout was comfortable and plush, but there were also quite a few impractical bits which I'll point out as we go along. The armchair was actually very comfortable, but you need to be of a very specific height and sit in a very specific manner for that over shoulder light to actually be of use. Next up, the children's size sofa, bottle of wine just for scale. The seating was low enough to instantly make me think about the tiny stools that we sit on at eateries in Vietnam. It's fine for when you're eating pho, but it's not that comfortable for lounging. On the coffee table, we had a bottle of wine that was set up as a welcome amenity and the ever so popular wooden key cards that many hotels are using these days. On this side of the bed, we have what amounts to be a whole lot of unnecessary and clunky technology. The touchpad on the wall controlled the lighting, climate, and curtains, and that's all fine. Then we have a separate tablet, which is essentially just a hotel directory, and it can't actually do anything. If the lighting controls and such were integrated into the tablet, then that would make a bit more sense. The silliest part to me, though, was the old cell phone. This was the primary phone in the room, and while there were numbers stored for room service and one for reception, the staff also had a multitude of other phone numbers that they'd call you from. Finally, even though you had everything in the tablet, there were also paper copies. Give me a tablet that can do everything and a real phone. That's all we need. The room had a decent amount of closet space and had a nice mini bar area as well. On offer, we had Nespresso pods plus a pod style tea machine, which I don't think I've ever seen in a hotel before. Next up, the bathroom, which had really beautiful finishings. This part of the bathroom can be closed off by two pocket doors that meet at a 90 degree angle. When the doors were open, it was nice and spacious, but as soon as you close them, it did feel quite small. As nice as this all marble bathroom is though, the bathroom products were just generic and in non-tamper-proof bulk containers, a pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. 
Lastly, it has to be one of the strangest setups in a standard sized room that I've seen in a while. The toilet is in a separate room, that part's normal. But it's in the entry hall, and that door has got to be the firmest auto-close I think I've ever encountered in my life. Honestly, I imagine small kids would not be able to open the door themselves, and there's no way to prop the door open either. A quick walk through the room to take us to the view of Grand Via below. In the score, I mentioned traffic noise as a problem. To clarify, it wasn't a problem for me personally. When the windows were closed, there was plenty of noise dampening. But Barcelona's climate lends quite a big chunk of the year to sleeping, you know, with the windows open. So if you're very sensitive to noise while sleeping, it's something to consider. Then we head to the basement level where there's a small fitness center and sauna. So overall, what are we looking at here? I'd say the facilities are more than adequate and I can imagine how this branding can easily translate into many different European markets. But I just couldn't help feel like there was something missing. Barcelona is a gorgeous, vibrant city known for its colorful and abstract Gaudi or Gaudi-inspired architecture. And the Almanac just seems pretty buttoned up. Now onto the flip-flop score. Feel free to pause to take a closer look if you'd like. I really hope that you enjoyed this video today and hope that you'll subscribe for much, much more content to come. I'll see you next week at the Edition Barcelona.